to me, that's an inspiring story. And it's one, again, that uh, the Olympics gives you the opportunity to tell. I fear that it's not going to be told, however. We need to wind up. My sense is that the leadership transition that we are going through is filled with uncertainty right now because of the nature of our political campaigns, which often bear little relationship to what follows in the administration itself. And here we do have a consistent historical pattern, which is it doesn't matter where the candidates come from on China during the campaign, but when they assume the top office, they find that U.S. interests are advanced by having a good relationship with China and that our interests suffer if we have a bad relationship with China. So I am confident that whoever is elected president in this country will find that we need to deal with China in a positive way. The question is, how long will it take for them to realize this? Uh, there are opportunity costs, uh -huh. but I'm confident about the outcome. Uh, uh, you know, the, the problem would be if uh, we have calamitous circumstances intervene that force hands, and uh, I think the, the political outcome in Taiwan was good news for all parties involved, uh, again, keeping tensions down. Um, if Jeffrey's right, the Olympics may not go so well, and that's going to create more tensions and more opportunity for finger pointing and blame. Uh, and then, of course, you come to larger arguments about things like relationships with North Korea um, and, uh, and Africa. And again, if those things don't go well, as we've seen, the, uh, this is a weighted word, but the simplistic American view is that China is to blame. I wouldn't be surprised if the Olympics went better than people are anticipating. I, I, I would imagine they'll go extremely well. The thing that I would be worried about for everybody is that the, I, I, I said before, let me just say, say to the audience that it, it seems to me that the higher the expectations that the Chinese government sets for the Olympics, and I think we'd all agree they could hardly be higher, the greater the incentives for groups who have grievances either within or outside China to uh, express their grievances in and around Beijing, the greater the incentives for that. In an environment where surely the Chinese government will do whatever it can not to be seen to crack down on any protest, it's got to, it's got to allow it if it happens. But what happens if somebody with a cell phone observes the youngest private in some some Chinese military entity or someone wearing a Chinese uniform doing something bad to a single protester. I think we now know that you know, in, in, the, in, in an age where everybody can be a documentary filmmaker, those images can go around the world really quickly. I, mean, I, was, I was speaking with Mike Chinoy um, yesterday about the CNN coverage of, CN, of Tiananmen Square, and I was asking him about the, the famous dance between the, the, the lone person and the tanks. And he said, so how was that shot? Well, that was shot, that was a real CNN camera sitting in a hotel room on the 11th floor of the Beijing Hotel that happened to be watching the main street of China, watching some tanks come down it, right? That was a pretty, that's a bit fluky that that happened. Now they were observing a lot because Tiananmen Square had just happened. But think about it in 2008, everybody who's there is going to have the ability to be the same documentary newscaster as was the case in Tiananmen Square, only for those few people, the, the CNN people who had the feed. So if you're thinking about it as global political reaction, the global political reaction could be enormous to a really tiny event. And you know that we, we, we all admire the Chinese state for its ability to do things. My God, they've done extraordinary things, including uh, with respect to the Olympics. But do they have the ability to stop protests? No, I think they don't want to do that. They can't do it. Uh, it what happens if something gets caught on film? And, and, and now, we, now you'd have a leadership, a real leadership issue in the US. And, uh, and uh, you go, go back to the, 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 the political logic that you said recurs. As you know, 
You know, George Bush Sr. is a revered figure in China. And I think the reason he's a revered fig figure is because he resisted the temptation to react, to overreact to Tiananmen Square. And, and uh, you know, a question, I think a live question is, would we expect the same uh, nuanced, balanced reaction to something going wrong uh, in the Olympics in 2008? I mean, I hope for, every, for the whole world's sake that the answer to that question is yes, but I don't know that we can be 100% confident of that. Well, I must say from the media perspective, I'm not as optimistic as you are about the, you said that the Chinese government wouldn't crack down because the, the, the sense already in American media is that there was the promise of freedom to go out and tell stories in China with the Olympics coming. Uh, there was the promise that there would be uh, free exchange of ideas, that there would be more freedoms on the internet and in Chinese media, and that those promises have not been fulfilled yet. So there's a growing tension in, in American media. There's almost a sense of preparing for a fight, spoiling for a fight. Well, let's not, let's not end on too somber a note. <laughs> um. <laughs> I could tickle you, State. <laughs> I think that in thinking about what might happen, one has to look at all of the potential bad outcomes. But one of the functions of leadership is to try to avoid the bad outcomes. And it would seem to me that people who are concerned about the Olympics, who are concerned about China's relationship with the outside world, uh, and who are concerned about the future of prosperity and progress in East Asia and in the United States, would want a better outcome than you have just described. And I don't know that a free media necessarily has as its top objective uh, a worst case outcome. Uh, one can't exclude it, but one would hope that they would also recognize that there are positive stories to tell. Here, here. Thank you, our audience for your attention. We appreciate it. <laughs>